live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Well, despite an early polling error impacting the vote count, Labor's Brian Mitchell leads the race to return to the federal seat of Lyons. Thousands of postal votes are still being counted for the electorate, but as we go to air, Mitchell is more than 720 votes ahead of his Liberal challenger, Susie Bauer. Tasmanian pharmacies are being forced to put more staff on to deal with the demand for flu vaccinations. A record amount of people have already come forward to get the jab, with 57 confirmed cases of influenza so far this year. With concerns of a super flu sweeping through mainland states, Tasmanians aren't taking any chances. Inside this Sandy Bay pharmacy, staff are working around the clock to keep locals protected. We're super busy, so we've been we've already done about like 15 vaccinations just in the morning. Um, it's just sort of one after another at the moment, just trying to keep up with demand. They're one of many clinics assisting in the influenza jab rollout on top of delivering the COVID vaccine. Because we've been so busy with all the vaccinations, we've had to put on more stuff just to keep up with the uptake because um, everywhere's booked out, so it's really hard for people to get in. Despite a small number of flu cases circulating in the community for now, health officials are bracing for what's to come. We are concerned that Queensland have seen a trebling in cases just in the last, three, last seven days. Um, and if that comes through in Tasmania in four weeks' time, we need to be ready for that. Around 65% of people aged over 65 are already vaccinated, but there's one cohort who will need particular attention. The cohort under five, we've only delivered about 10% of that population. Pharmacists and GPs continue to be the primary provider of flu vaccinations, but this season a lack of supply is being noticed as many struggle to access more doses in the lead up to winter. There's 305,000 are pre-ordered, pre so ready to go. Um, pharmacies are now struggling because of later orders, but they'll get there. Already 165,000 doses down. Which is ahead of schedule for, if we go back to 2019, pre-COVID, we're, we're probably already about 25 to 30,000 ahead of that. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmanian News. Sick people with non-life-threatening conditions are being urged to avoid going to the LGH emergency department and instead head to the GP. The hospital is experiencing a high demand for emergency services in addition to managing a COVID outbreak in one of the medical wards. Bed alternatives, including ones in contracted private hospitals, will be utilised. Four of the nation's civil society organisations are joining forces to oppose controversial changes to Tasmania's anti-protest laws. TASCOS, the Australia Institute, the Human Rights Law Centre and the Australia Democracy Network have concerns the changes would go too far. They say they are too broad and could stifle the rights of Tasmanians to peacefully protest. Are unnecessary and unclear about what exactly they're, going, they're trying to achieve. Holding a placard is not the same as holding a gun. This bill does not get the balance right and it will have a chilling effect on peaceful protests throughout Tasmania. Resources Minister Guy Barnett says the changes are aimed at protecting businesses and employees' right to work. The first changes to help reform Tasmania's under siege child protection system have been unveiled. New laws will be introduced this year, while funding and training will be increased to ensure victims are not left behind. The Premier also confirming Parliament will make a historic apology to those he says the system let down. Confronting, jarring and emotional. The Commission of Inquiry into Child Sex Abuse has only just begun, but it's already exposing a system crying out for reform. Those first steps forward today made public. For the sake of children today and the children born tomorrow, this government and indeed all of us are acting. More than $36 million in new funding rolled out. Safeguarding officers will be put in public schools, along with mandatory professional development. More than 20 new professionals also hired, while sharing information between departments will become easier. We must abolish any bureaucracy, any red tape that prevents the sharing of information. 
a new crime, failing to protect a child at risk of abuse by an adult associated with an organisation will be enacted. While children under 17 will no longer be able to consent to sexual intercourse with a person in a position of authority. Training is also being rolled out across the state service to prevent victims being re-traumatised. And Tasmania's parliament will say sorry to all those impacted. It is appropriate that an apology is tripartisan. I would expect a formal apology to be delivered at the completion of the Commission's public proceedings. Opposition parties welcoming the historic reforms, but they want more information on when and how it will happen. We'll be looking for some detail because that's quite important. This must, must be a priority for the government. It was a statement of intent, but the proof will be in the eating. We need to make sure that there is more resourcing going into the child safety system. The person who helped expose the crisis at Tasmania's youth detention centre, wanting an external body set up to protect employees from recriminations. An external group and a truly independent external group that staff can report safely to. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. An 80-year-old man has died while rowing on the Tamar River. Police say the man's empty boat was spotted around 10am. His body was found an hour and a half later. A report will be prepared for the coroner. Voting could soon become compulsory for local government elections in Tasmania. We're one of only three states where it isn't compulsory and change may be on the way, with Parliament preparing to vote on a bill. The love-hate relationship Australians have with politicians and elections may soon intensify in Tasmania. A new bill could make voting in council elections compulsory. The decisions made by these councils are just as important as those made at a state and federal government level. It's a bid to raise the participation rate, which stood at only 58% in the last local government election. The more connected people are to their local government, the more likely they are to actually vote. Tasmania's local government association has thrown its support behind the move for quite some time. The last time um, it was brought before a state conference, which was in 2018, it lost by one vote. But President Christina Holmdahl says it wasn't consulted when push came to shove. We were informed by the minister about three weeks ago that, ca that the um, cabinet had signed off on it coming before the House. The proposal received mixed reviews on the streets. Definitely should be compulsory because everyone needs to have a say for, to make a change. No compulsory anything. A democracy does not uh, allow for that sort of thing. Uh, then, then we would be a part dictatorship. A decision will be made next Tuesday. Brianna Boylan, 7, Tasmania News. The state government has once again defended the former sports minister's role in funding arrangements for the Jack Jumpers. Labor today releasing documents which it says show Jane Howlett personally wrote to former Premier Peter Gutwin asking for a grant to be given to the organisation. When asked about it during question time, the current Premier says the then Sport Minister had no role in signing off on the funding. The department was responsible for the payment process, not the approval process. This was simply a procedural letter which was necessary to enable the department to release the funds. The opposition is pushing for an inquiry into the matter. Anti-fish farm advocates have welcomed recommendations in Tasmania's Salmon Inquiry report, but say they don't go far enough in addressing issues. The fine print highlights environmental harm caused by the industry, along with community discontent of the practice. The Bob Brown Foundation is among groups leading the charge, calling on the Premier to act on the changes put forward. The ceasing of operations in very uh, biodiverse and uh, critical sheltered waterways, we fully endorse that. And there are other recommendations in there as well, like re uh, rearranging the management of seals that we fully endorse. The inquiry has taken place over more than two years. 68 recommendations have been listed, from better EPA oversight to more transparency from government. Wild weather up north is having a major impact at supermarket giants down south with fresh fruit and veggies like lettuce, zucchini and spinach in short supply. It sent prices soaring with a single iceberg lettuce costing more than $6. Producers say supplies won't return to normal until spring where the weather improves. Consumers are advised to seek substitute fruit and vegetables. 
While there's been plenty of drama on screen over the past 60 years, there's also been plenty of it. As we continue to celebrate TNT 9's 60th anniversary, tonight's special feature looks at the rise and fall of Edmund Rouse, the parochial media mogul who turned this station into a business heavyweight before his empire crumbled and the station took on new competition. From the dawn of TNT 9 in 1962, it took only three years for the fledgling station to be absorbed into a new company, ENT. It would become a media behemoth combining TNT 9 television with the Examiner newspaper. The picture was rosy as TV's golden era in the 70s and 80s saw local programming and viewership boom. Have a go, have a go at that. <laughs> now here's your host, Tim Lester. Hello and welcome to the biggest single episode of Quiz Quest for 1986. This is the grand final. For songs and stories, things to do on Rupert's Roundabout. But ENT had expansion in its sights and regional parochialism was set to be tested. In 1982, ENT took over Hobart's TV station, creating Taz TV. This effectively gave ENT's boss Edmund Rouse a monopoly over commercial television in the state. Such was the company's success, it was ranked among Australia's best share market performers in the 80s, once described as the BHP of Tasmania. Rouse himself wasn't shy of flaunting his wealth, his Rolls Royce intended to stand out, and while he was revered by some for his championing of northern Tasmania and quick wit, he was equally reviled for his brashness. We work on the very sim simple philosophy that a competitor's head is there to kick, not to pat. But from that high watermark came the most remarkable downfall in what's simply known as the bribery scandal. A package containing $5,000 in $100 bills arrived at Cox's home, the first of three payments. The all-powerful kingpin had tried to bribe his former employee turned Labor MP Jim Cox to cross the floor in state parliament and help the Liberals stay in power. Instead of taking the bribe, Cox contacted police. His phone was tapped and in a sensational sting, the once untouchable media mogul was sentenced to three years behind bars. In a plea for leniency, Rouse's counsel Mr Jack Hedigan QC described the bribery attempt as farcically inept. He likened it to an amateur theatrical production being made up as it went along. By then, the ENT empire was starting to split, most notably when the examiner was sold to Fairfax in 1990. It was a very, very hard decision to sell the examiner. It was like selling your mother. While on the television side, TNT9 was sold to Tricom, which swiftly rebranded the station to Southern Cross. Launching a new look for its lineup of shows. This week on the Saturday Morning Fun Show, catch up with alias Nick and Jones. They come face to face with Yahoo Serious, Saturday morning on Southern Cross. But a bigger earthquake struck in 1994. In just a moment, we're going to witness a major change to the television industry in Tasmania with the commencement of aggregation. That meant this station started broadcasting statewide for the first time. Andrew Denton flicking the switch. God bless Southern Cross Television and all who soil in her. The expansion had its own tagline. As the station said goodbye to content from 9 and changed to a mixture of 7 and 10. Lifestyles of the 90s. Healthy, wealthy and wise. We'll show you everything under the Southern Cross. Are you ready for us? Oh, Emma, what a start! Tassie loves AFL footy and the football will only be on Southern Cross. Over time, viewers warmed to the expanded network. And the Tasmanian Tiger logo at the turn of the century became an icon of its own. Today our content is sourced purely from the Seven Network and has been the state's ratings winner for more than a decade. So how to define the legacy of the man who started it all? For someone who so often had the last word, it's only fitting we leave it to him. I did quite a lot for the state that I... Uh, Uh, I was a good citizen, I believe, and I think I'd like to be remembered for those two things. I won't be, of course, I'll be remembered for all the other things, but anyway, you can always hope. 
Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. And tomorrow night, our lens turns to the news, from the earliest exclusives caught on camera to the revolutions in news gathering and the changes to how your news is delivered. I hope you can join us tomorrow as we continue our 60th special anniversary series. First of football, the state government is reiterating it doesn't want Victorian hand-me-downs representing Tasmania in the AFL. Interstate Media is once again reporting the idea of North Melbourne semi-relocating to Tasmania instead of granting the state a 19th licence. But Sport Minister Nick Street has shut down the concept, saying they're not interested in renting a team. He also says the only way the league can be truly national is having a Tasmanian-owned and operated club involved. A big signing for the North West Thunder, securing the signature of American Elijah Thomas. The six foot nine guard comes from California Baptist University, where Bernie Brothers Trey and Taryn Armstrong have made a name for themselves on the college basketball circuit. Originally from Arizona, Thomas played 57 games for the college team, recording a career high 14 rebounds last year. To hockey, Amelia Spencer's return has been a godsend for Derwent. She smashed two goals to help down Canterbury 3-1. The side is slowly getting back to normal with the senior stars missing in action in recent weeks. How many times have we seen that? Myself have been playing defence but now I'm back on, on the striker line. Um, but we've now got that set up in defence and we've actually got that consistency so we can go back to where we were initially playing. OHA remains undefeated on top of the women's table. Derwent is on top in the men's. And she captivated our hearts when she made the All-Star Mile. Now still a star, is heading to New Pastures Interstate. The champion mare sold today for $700,000 to a start in New South Wales. Closing the book on one of Tasmania's great sporting stories. Still a star, or mini to those who knew her, was the first lady of Longford, the mayor which motivated a town to get behind her campaign to qualify for the All-Star Mile. She's only pint-sized our mini, but she's racing for Longford. But Minnie has now well and truly run her race, auctioned off for the Gold Coast National Broodmare sale for a cool $700,000. She's left a little bit of a hole around here. Monica Ryan was behind the inspired campaign which made Still a Star a household name. Our tyres stick and so does Still a Star. Go Minnie! The little battler with a taste for suit jackets cobbled together just enough votes to enter the world's richest mile race. Now her paddock's been taken over by the more reserved Take the Sit, who, unlike Still a Star, shies away from the limelight. Just two completely different personalities. Her trainer and confidant Bill Ryan watched the auction unfold on the Gold Coast. I heard that he did get a little bit of dirt in his eye when the hammer went down. As he said goodbye to a friend, his mini is heading to the Widden Stud in New South Wales. A lot of people still ask about her and how she's going and I assume it will happen still for a long time. A legend this town will never forget. Yeah, great horse, a great story. And, um, and Kim, the, the jacket has been dry cleaned since that one went to air. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Thanks, Tom. She's still our star. Good evening, Hobart, Burnie and Devonport, all 15 today. Launceston, 16, which was one short of the Hyatt, Smithton and the Bass Strait Islands. Lyawini did pretty well overnight, pushing it right down to minus 10, which was cold even for Lyawini. In fact, 9.7 degrees below their May average. St Helens, 16 today. Low head friendly beaches and Strawn, 15. Grove and Bushy Park, 13. Lyawini. Weenie did stage a 21 degree turnaround to register a high of 11. Some scattered cloud over the north and east today, clear skies for the remainder of Tasmania. A middle to high level band of cloud extends from central Australia to the southern ocean, swirling into a low. Cold air is sitting over western Australia. Tomorrow the high continues to lag just off to the east, a trough evident over South Australia, a cold front further west with a weak high to its north. North to north easterly winds as strong as 15 to 25 knots and even 30 knots at times over the northwest tomorrow, fairly slight swells. Strong wind warning for waters between Low Rocky Point and Stanley and a frost warning for the central north, Midlands, Upper Doohan Valley and southeast forecast districts. Forecast for Hobart, sunny and 16 tomorrow, cool overnight, 3 the low, 3 also for Jeeveston, warming up to 16 as well, minus 2 to start at Bothwell, 14 the high under sunny skies. Launceston, partly cloudy and 17, 17 the top also for Devonport, the chance of a light shower, 15 the high for Cressy. Burnie expecting a light shower or two, 16 the maximum, 17 and sunny for Strawn, partly cloudy on King Island, Curry, 17 degrees. And 17 also for St Helens and Swansea, 16 the high for Orford, sunny the further you go down 
the south of the east coast. On Thursday, showers over the north extending to most areas during the afternoon, not much over the east and southeast. More showers on Friday contracting to the central and east in the evening and on Saturday an early shower clearing from Hobart but continuing over the north and west in the afternoon. Partly cloudy and 21 in Perth. Showers and 19 in Adelaide, 19 as well in Melbourne but fine and sunny there. Showers though for Sydney and Brisbane. Clear in Hobart, it's 8 degrees. Same in Launceston, clear in Devonport too and 8 degrees. Yes, Kim, this time of year, Liaweenie comes into its own. Plenty of mentions on the weather. 21 degree turnaround today. Didn't even see a swing like that in the election. <laughs> Indeed, you're right there, Murph. Thanks very much. And that is all your news for this Tuesday. We'll have news, sport and weather updates later. For now, on behalf of the team, it's good night.